Hope you're having a uh, good weekend, or had a good weekend, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, this is for section 1.7, uh, solving inequalities. So, like it says in the top, uh, solving inequalities is essentially, you're doing all the same steps if it was an equal sign. Uh, there are a couple of extra things to think about towards the end, but for the most part, it's all the same. Um, the biggest thing here, you know, addition and subtraction properties, those are the same thing. You just add in the same number both sides, everything stays the same. You subtract the same number from both sides, everything stays the same. But the difference comes from, the difference with the inequalities comes from the multiplication and division property. If you are starting with some inequality, a, a value of A is less than or equal to B, as it says there in the circle, um, if you're starting with that inequality, if you multiply or divide by a number that is less than zero, so you're multiplying or dividing both sides of the uh, inequality by a negative value, inequality changes direction. All right, that's the, that's the biggest thing. That's something you always got to be conscious of. Um, when you start studying more and more mathematics, you'll see uh, there's an extra property to that. Um, but for the most part, this is the most common thing you're looking for. Multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number. You change the direction of the inequality, or sometimes it's referred to as changing the sense of the inequality. And as it says on the bottom, these rules here can be written with any of the inequality symbols. Greater than or equal to, less than, or just greater than. Did you like the arrows? Okay. Uh, write an inequality that describes the graph. So just basic inequality work, uh, things to think about. We have a closed circle. So that means that we have an or equal to. So we're starting here at negative 4. Uh, we'll just call this the x-axis. It really doesn't matter what letter you call it. It doesn't matter. Uh, but we are starting at negative 4. And because our arrow is going this way towards greater numbers, we have x values that are greater than and because it's a closed circle, or equal to negative 4. And this arrow tells us it just keeps on going. So x value is greater than or equal to negative 4. For the next one, we have this open circle here at negative 7. So open circle, you don't, you're not including that value. So there is no or equal to's. But we have x values greater than, so, oops, sorry, greater than negative 7. And so that tells us we're going this way, but then we have this closed circle here at 4. So with this part of it, we have x values less than or equal to 4. Now we have space all in between here. We're not going past or greater than 4. We're not going less than negative 7. So what we can do here, we have them both, both of these inequalities. We're going to write it as one double inequality. We always start with the smallest number first. That's the negative 7. Now, I've changed the direction of this, but it reads the same way. If you read from x, x values greater than negative 7, and then less than or equal to 4. It's called a double inequality. You have both of these things happening at the same time. All right, so to solve these things, again, everything is the same as if it was an equal sign. So if we're going to solve this first one for d, oh, and again, when you're doing these notes, Hit pause, try them on your own, and then you can hit play, see how you did. Please do that. All right, solving for D. First thing we're going to do is add 3 to both sides. We're just adding a number. Inequality stays the same. Dividing by a positive 8, uh, inequality symbol stays the same. Uh, let's see, 12 eighths is the same thing as three halves. All right, that's our answer. D is less than or equal to three halves. Three halves is one and a half. We have an or equal to. So to graph our answer, we go to 1.5, close circle. We have all the values less than that. Just make sure you put the arrow point in the right direction. And that's it for that one. Okay, for this bottom one, let's uh, raise the page up a bit. There we go. Okay, we got our y values on both sides of inequality. Again, no different than if it was an equal sign. I'm going to subtract 2y, and we're going to subtract 15. 
getting all the variables on the same side, adding and subtracting numbers from both sides, inequality stays the same. Uh, 9 minus 15 is a negative 6. We are dividing by a positive 3. All right, what we get, again, you always, with inequalities, you always read from the variable. Y values greater than negative 2. We can rearrange this so it looks a little bit more normal, so we read left to right, but you always read from the variable. Y values greater than negative 2. So at negative 2, we put an open circle, and we want numbers more than that. There's the graph for it. Okay, uh, a couple of definitions here, or, I mean, obvious words, but in mathematics, when you have an and statement, you've got to have both things. All right, that's the key thing, that both of them have to be true. When you have an or statement, you've got to have at least one. It could be one or the other, could be both, but you've got to have at least one. All right, so for this example, again, go ahead, hit pause, try this on your own. With the two statements, just solve them individually. So we're going to have, if you subtract 3 from both sides, we get a negative 2. Dividing by a positive 2, we get this. For the second inequality, again, just treat it like it's an equal sign. Divide by 5. Okay, we have this and statement. So we've got to have them both x values greater than negative 1, x values less than 3. It's got to be both, so it's just really this segment in between negative 1 and positive 3. That's the graph of this. And just like uh, the first example with those number lines, um, we can write our solution as a double inequality. That double inequality is pretty much saying you got to have them both, it's an AND statement. So you could write it like this, negative 1 with a positive 3 there. Again, always reading from the variable. I would accept this. I would think that you should be able to go to that also. All right, last one, the OR statement. Again, one or the other, or both. So to solve this one, same thing, solve them individually. 2b greater than or equal to 4, divide by 2. Solving this one, uh, when you subtract 7, you get a negative 6, divide by, oops, wrong way, divide by 3, you get a negative 2. Okay, so to graph this one, it's, and we got this or statement again, it says b value is greater than or equal to positive 2. Or equal to is a closed circle, greater than that. So the second part of the answer is at negative 2, or equal to, so a closed circle, but we want the values that are less than that. So these arrows are going in opposite directions. They're kind of like rays. They're just going in opposite directions. Okay, this is the idea of the or. You can't have a single number that is in both, but you can have a number that's in at least one of these. And that's, that is it for this. Have a good night. See you tomorrow.